Hello, hello, hello. Check out my antlers. Aren't these the best? Had to talk life without a microwave in antlers. Thank you, Caribou Coffee, for your $10 set of glasses. Um, love hate relationship with the microwave. You're not alone. We had a microwave for years and then we haven't had a microwave for several years. Uh, and then I just recently caved, bought a very small one, keep it in our very cold, unheated garage for um, my kiddos because they like to, actually it's even my husband more than the kids, likes to warm up those rice sacks. And you, you can't put those in the oven, right? So he warms those up and then cozies up with them on the couch or in bed. But let's talk about what life is like without a microwave. You know, depending on the source, depending on what you're reading, uh, like I said, in the source, who who wrote that? Um, they're just saying microwave radiation. It's, you know, not correlated to um, uh, downshift in your health or upshift in disease. I don't know if I entirely buy that. It just seems like another force of, a source of radiation that we don't necessarily need. Uh, and so we just don't keep one in the house. We have found other ways around it. So we're just going to touch on a few few little things that make life easier if you have one that's broken and you're like, I don't want to replace it. What do I do with this gap in my kitchen? Uh, I used it as a bookshelf. I used it as a spot to hold our cookbooks until we did a, a kitchen remodel. And, um, and then, you know, then it was a remodel. So, so it was fine and, and not a problem. Um, so the downsides, microwaves, yes. So, um, you know, one of those is they might not heat evenly or um, thoroughly. And so they might need, not be quite as effective as we think they are in completely cooking out or killing bacteria or potential other pathogens, which could lead to food poisoning. Um, that's because the heat tends to be lower and the cooking time is shorter. Uh, my concern is, like I said, that additional radiation and it just seems like an easy thing to not have in the house. So that's why we got rid of ours. So how do you live without one? I have my notes here and I'm sorry, you can't see my eyes because of the glare, but I feel like these are just so important to have to wear, <laughs> have to wear them. Oh, plus it's practice, you know, if I have to wear glasses, I will have to get used to wearing glasses at some point. Okay, how do you heat food without a microwave? You use a toaster oven. If you don't have a toaster oven, you just use your oven. Um, you know, it does take a little bit longer to heat up, which is the benefit of having a toaster oven. And we have one of those dual, uh, you know, ovens underneath our stove where it's got like one that's smaller and then you know the larger oven underneath i rarely use the larger oven compartment i almost always use the small one and heats up really really fast we do also have a toaster oven i've been a huge fan of toaster ovens we burn one out every few years because it's used multiple times a day it's like our blender we go through those you know quickly uh but you can you know in toaster ovens these days you can air fry you can bake you can toast you can you know you can just warm things there's a variety of ways to use um those uh elements so in you know the question of like how would you heat up food so i'm a big fan of parchment paper so there's like a tray right that comes with a toaster oven so i line it with parchment paper and i'll put on it whatever it is that i'm heating up assuming it's not liquid if it's liquid or soft then i put it in just a glass pyrex container and that's one thing that i love is um i have a couple little cork sized or style excuse me trivets so i say if i'm heating a bowl of soup that ceramic or glass bowl can go right into the toaster oven. I just use a hot pad to pull it out. I slide it right onto a trivet and I just take that, you know, wherever I am going to eat that. And, and that is just super easy. Um, one thing to remember, if you do take something hot out of the toaster oven and you, you know, pour it into a, a dish or something, if you put that glass, hot glass, right into your sink and turn water in it to rinse it, glass will go, you know, it'll bust and go everywhere. That happens a few times a month because I just never remember that. But I'm remembering to tell you, and that's what's the most important. You will be well taken care of. Me, it's do as I say, you know, not as I do. Um, so the other thing we do, like, um, and it's got different, uh, you know, toaster ovens, toaster ovens have like different levels for which you can toast. And my husband reads the whole manual. I don't, I just wing it and it works for me every time. So you're fine there. So heating food is one thing. Making popcorn. How do you make popcorn without... A microwave. It's a thing. You can really do it. My, um, we grew up on an air popper or like with an air popper and that seemed fine and dandy, but I didn't love not being able to cook my kernels in oil. 
So a few years ago, one of my favorite gifts my mom bought me is a, it's called a whirly popper. So they have like a stainless steel or an aluminum version. Try to find the stainless steel if you can. Um, it's just a sort of looks like a big kettle. Um, and then you stir, there's a little handle that you stir. So you put your oil in, we use coconut oil, and then you put your non-GMO popcorn, organic popcorn kernels in there and you make your popcorns. That's a super easy, cost-effective way of making um, popcorn. So not needing microwave popcorn means, you know, less GMO containing junk, better health across the board, easier, easier, um, easy peasy on that one. The other thing that people use a microwave for um, is just heating, heating water. Now if that's heating water for uh, a baby. I don't love that idea because I think of the uneven heating in the hot spots has always kind of freaked me out if we're, you know, heating something up food or, you know, beverage for baby that that makes me nervous. So you want more of an even heat element for that. So we primarily just heat water for tea, for coffee, um, for other uses. We would just use a saucepan until a couple of years ago, we purchased the electric heater water kettle, which, you know, you fill it with water, you plug it in, you turn it on in like a minute to max, you have bubbling hot boiling water. Um, and that's super fantastic. As much as I think like, oh, I don't need another thing on my counter. And, you know, at the end of the day, I put it up on the shelf right above the next morning it's out and it's used all day long. So then it just ends up living out on the counter more often than not. But those are super um, handy. Now, here's the other thing. Um, we have an electric cooktop and not a gas range. And so sometimes it becomes like an extended countertop. I'm not the only one. I know I'm not. Um, and I have melted, I will admit, I have melted a couple of the electric water kettles by not paying attention when I do turn the stove top on and starting to melt it to the top. So um, you can see busy mom, busy mind in the kitchen with lots of things going on. Things happen, spatulas and blenders, you name it, it's happened in my kitchen with me at the, the helm. Um, so again, we use that, that water kettle for tea, coffee, for preparing coffee for my coffee enemas, for um, preparing hot water bottles, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. It just takes a couple minutes. It's super convenient. And the price is right on that. So you're coming in around like 30, 35 bucks for one of those electric water kettles. They work so, so well. Um, also, you can use that for one of the ways I discover heating up food or water for, for babies. You know, food still, you could use a toaster oven for a more even heat. Um, if you're putting it on warm versus toast, toast will just get from the top down, but not the underneath if you're heating food. <clears throat> is um, put boiled you know, boiling hot water in like a Pyrex bowl, and then you can set the bottle or whatever um, liquid you're warming for the baby container in that and just let the water evenly heat it from there is something that I used to do. Now, the, the biggest thing is, like I mentioned when I first started, my husband loves a microwave because we have these rice socks. And I wanted to promote the continued interest and usage of our sewing machine that has... Um, been new in the last eight or nine months or so for our, our uh, middle daughter. And so and she wanted to make some for Christmas. And so I was like, let's get a microwave so she can, you guys can warm these things up, you know, but I keep it in the garage. So they have to go out there in the freezing cold, unheated garage to throw their little thing in. And, you know, they're instructed not to stand in front of it, et cetera, et cetera. Now to get around that for the last number of years, what we've done is I bought hot water bottles. So remember back when your kids and your mom would heat up a hot water bottle and give it to you at our house that happened when we had an earache. My mom would fill the hot water bottle. She'd put a soft piece of cloth on top of the water bottle, and then we would lay on it on the side of the head that had the ear pain. Totally brings me back to being like seven years old, having like an earache and, you know, tonsillitis or something. So uh, a few years back, that was part of kind of a stocking stuffer um, scenario at our house were hot water bottles for everybody. You can get like a knit cover or a fleece cover. You could make your own cover or simply you could just wrap it also in like a flannel pillowcase. And that's a super cheap way to do that. But hot water bottles are used on the daily, on the daily at our house. Um, I heat it up to apply with the caster packs, you know, for core and gut inflammation and healing um, and stress reduction. We, um, my oldest daughter, when she's studying during the day, she takes a hot water bottle and puts it on the floor and then sets her toes on it. So she has really warm feet <laughs> during the day, which I love. I think that's so cute. We will heat up the hot water bottles and we'll tuck them into our sheets sometimes before we go to bed, which makes me feel like 
Ma and Pa Ingalls a little bit because back in the day they would wrap warm bricks or warm stone and tuck those um, in the bed to warm them up. And then sometimes we just like to cozy up with them on the couch. Like if we're building a little nest and we're doing nighttime or bedtime reading and stories, everybody's got like a little water bottle and we all have rosy cheeks and it's just super, super comfortable. So there is life beyond having a microwave. You can do it. It is possible. I love the space savings in our kitchen. We have a small galley of a kitchen. And even though it's just been remodeled, I'm still left with, wow, like how did we ever do it for so many years in such a small kitchen with one small little countertop to work from? Um, and now that we have even a little more space in that same kitchen, I don't even know where I would put a microwave. I'd be really sacrificing space that is so loved and, and highly, highly utilized. So again, there is life beyond having a microwave. And sometimes we have to wrap our brain around how are we going to do the things that we are, you know, normally wanting to do with, with a microwave. So like, again, use that toaster oven, make sure you're using glassware to heat it up, but you can go from the fridge right to the oven for reheating leftovers, warming up food works so fantastic. So I'll be back again next Wednesday, when Wellness Wednesday chat, 1 p.m. on uh, Facebook Live. And I don't know, maybe I'll be wearing the antlers. Maybe not. They're kind of growing on me. I think I love them. Thanks for joining.